Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida is probably one of the most popular parks in the entire country, mm -hmm. maybe yeah. even the world. Yeah, it is one. And one of your favorites, it right? It is one of my favorite parks. There's so much to do there, and there's so much planning that goes into mm -hmm. it. So we don't do many videos about it. We did a vlog whenever we went down there before. We mm -hmm. did a Velocicoaster review. review. And so we figure we'll add a little bit more Universal Studios yeah. into our catalog here. Because it is just such a great park or parks. Yeah, because there's three of them, mm -hmm. technically. And so soon to be four. Yeah, soon to be four. But this is our tip not really tips and kind of tips and tricks and just things that you must know before you yeah. make your plan to go down to universal studios now just quick disclaimer these aren't in any order or anything no. like that because we can't really say what would be important to you maybe a couple of these things will be important to you maybe a couple won't uh-huh it depends but uh they're all very good tips so i highly recommend that you listen because these will definitely help you when you visit universal studios all right, well, let's get into the first one, is plan your trip wisely. Now, what do we mean by that? It means that some days that you go, you might have two hour long lines for almost everything. Mm -hmm. And other days you go, like VelociCoaster might only be like a 15 minute wait and other things yeah. might be walk-ons. So how do you know? Now, some things are obvious. You don't want to go during any sort of like spring breaks or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, we try and avoid weekends if you can. Yeah, avoid weekends. But also, there's websites such as qtimes.com that has like really good crowd forecasters. Mm -hmm. And you can go on and they'll give you like color coded, like green is really good, up to red. Mm -hmm. is really bad and i'll tell you like extremely busy stay away stuff like tell that tell you how many people are there and what the wait times are so you know when the good times to go when when it's a good time to go and when it's a bad time to go well yeah q times can also show you the actual wait times but the crowd forecaster shows you a projection in the mm -hmm. future mm -hmm. so it's like weather but for crowds so the next thing that you need to know before going to Universal Studios is don't be afraid of spending too much time there because really you might be thinking, oh, like at first you might want to spend a couple days, maybe like two days or maybe just a day. And, and then you don't want to spend too much time because you're, you might be like, well, there's probably... You'll probably get bored. There's probably not enough stuff to do. Yeah. So, but that's not true. No, it is Universal not Studios all. Florida, like we said, is three separate parks. There's Universal Studios. There's Universal Studios, uh, Islands of Adventure, Adventure, and Volcano Bay. So there really is an endless amount of things to do. Yeah, if you're thinking about a week's vacation, don't be afraid of trying to book like four or five days at this place because you'll definitely find enough stuff to do. Mm -hmm. And next up, we just mentioned that there are three separate parks. You said Universal Studios, Islands of Adventure, mm -hmm. and Volcano Bay, which is their water park. Now, each one has their own ticket. Mm -hmm. So you can buy just a ticket to each one of those for different days, which is fine. But what we recommend is buying their multi-park, park, park hopper, hopper, whatever they call it's it. Park hopper. Park hopper. So buying a park hopper ticket, because then you get to go from park to park mm -hmm. each day. Because as fun as Universal Studios and as fun as Islands of Adventure and all these parks are, it's a lot more fun if you can go back and forth. Yeah, if you combine them. And especially because uh, going from Universal to Islands of Adventure and vice versa, you can take the Hogwarts Express, which is a train in the Harry Potter movies that is very, very cool. Like, it is extremely detailed. The stations are just like they are in the books and movies. And taking that uh, train is just amazing. And it's part of the experience. So definitely get the park hopper. Uh, and pass. you can only do that if you have the park hopper. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah. it, like you said... They go to two different parks, two different emissions. From within the park. So yeah. Yeah, you have yeah, to have the park the hopper ticket in order to do that. And so I definitely recommend that. So it's extra money to do the park hopper, but you can go to each park as you please and it is just very convenient and amazing. So you booked your trip, you're ready to go, 
Now you gotta figure out once you are there, what do you do? From our experience, what would be best is if you are into roller coasters, then you should go straight to Hagrid's Magical Creature Motorbike Adventure. That's a lot Which is a roller coaster in Islands of Adventure. And going there first, like right when the gates open, right when you get through the entrance, go straight there. Because what we found is that could be the best because it can get probably the longest line of any ride in the whole park. I'd say almost definitely, almost yeah. always gets mm -hmm. the longest line. So if you head straight there. You beat the crowds. Especially if you have early admission, mm -hmm. if you stay at one of their hotels, mm -hmm. then you can get early admission. Or if, or if you're a pass, pass holder, holder yeah. obviously. But if you're a pass holder, you probably go there a lot, so you may not be watching this mm -hmm. anyway. But, yeah, if you stay at one of their hotels, you get early admission, and that's usually one of the early admission rides. Mm -hmm. Unless it is broken down, because it is kind of a finicky ride and can break down. Yeah, so definitely if it's open, try and ride it immediately. Uh Whenever you have the chance to. Yeah, down right right in the gate, straight to Hagrid's, even if VelociCoaster is your main point of going, which a lot of enthusiasts, that would be the main point of going. Still, Hagrid's first. You'll thank us later. And speaking of thanking us, nothing can thank us more than hitting that subscribe button. We love that you're watching the video. Thank you. We appreciate it. Out of all these videos on YouTube, the hundreds and hundreds of videos all over YouTube. You're watching ours, and we definitely appreciate that. And we thank you. So by thanking us, hit that subscribe, hit that like, and comment down below. It helps out our channel greatly. Now, on with the program. Okay, Milo just told you to go straight to Hagrid's. Mm -hmm. I call it Hagrid's. I don't go through all that. He told you what to do first and what to do. I'm telling you what not to do. The next... A piece of advice that we have is skip the Simpsons ride. Or it's or we are warning you if yes. you really do want to ride it. And why is that? Well, it can make you sick. Now, when we wrote it, it I, I got off and you were a little dizzy, right? Yeah, I mean, we can. Yeah, I was a little dizzy. I was almost nauseous from that thing. And I chalked it up to maybe because we are riding a bunch of the rides and we're not used to a ton of 4D rides, like the indoor, like mm -hmm. interactive yeah, rides. They have a ton of those. mostly what they have at Universal and, and Islands of Adventure. So I wasn't sure if that was just catching up with me and maybe like that was just like the last straw. But what I read online, tons of other people said, hey, you know what? I got mm -hmm. sick after riding Simpsons. So if you feel like you can get motion sickness at all, and even if you aren't like, yeah, I mean, like prone I, to motion sickness. Yeah, yeah, you can, I mean, I'm good for most things with getting dizzy. Like I can handle some minor stuff for the most part, but this is, um, it makes you pretty dizzy. So yeah, if you are very like committed to writing it, we're warning you. Yeah. It, if otherwise, you're a huge Simpsons is, fan, yeah. then ride it and uh -huh. maybe take some drama me or something before. It. Otherwise, it's a fun ride, but yes, it will make you dizzy. So, after a long day of riding rides, going into shops, shops uh, buying those uh, Harry Potter uh, Harry dr Potter robes. robes, robes, yes, robes, and buying your wands, you are very hungry. Oh, I'm hungry. And what's good is that Universal and Islands of Adventure have some of the best food and best restaurants of pretty much any other theme park around and the best one from what we've heard is mythos which is a it, what is a what country is it well what what country is the food from yeah it's like a um well it seems like they have a lot of different things like i know mm -hmm. that we were we wanted to go because they had a vegan pad thai there. Yeah, they have like pad thai and it's like a very... Just, um, it's one of the most popular restaurants. Yes, yes. And if you go to Universal Studios during a non-busy time, like we told you to do, mm -hmm. then you probably don't need to get reservations for most any restaurant. You could easily find food all day long. Yeah, you can just... Either whether, at City Walk. Yeah, whether it's just a sit-down restaurant or these little like stands that you see in like a city where you get like hot dogs and stuff, you will be very well fed. But this place in particular, you do need reservations 
and we did not know that and we really wanted to eat here because the food looked really good and the place is like very well themed yeah. but we could not because we needed reservations and it was all booked yeah for the so rest that of the night. so that's our big tip if you want to eat at Mythos or mm -hmm. mytho mythos, mythos. Which if you is. want to eat at Mythos, then it doesn't matter what time of year it is. It doesn't matter how busy or slow it's going to be. You need reservations now. How far in advance? I don't know. Yeah. Like during busy times, maybe a few weeks even, mm -hmm. and maybe at slower times, maybe could wait like a week or a few days or something. But I know we walked up there all hungry, all ready to go, and we were turned away. And we found out the hard way that, and the park was relatively dead whenever mm -hmm. we went because we planned wisely. Yeah, so, and this is right in one of the top uh, restaurants at theme parks. Yeah, so you want, you probably want to eat there, mm -hmm. but you need to plan ahead for that. So anything else, if that's not your thing, if you don't really want to eat there, then most other places you can get by and eat just fine. But yeah, that tip is definitely make your reservation at Mythos if you want to eat there. And last but not least, this isn't completely about all of you, like the whole year for Universal Studios. This is particularly about Halloween time, Halloween Horror Nights. One of the most popular events all year. They have tons of great haunted houses every year. Mm -hmm. They do themes to different, uh, different movies, Texas Chainsaw Massacre sometimes. Mm -hmm. I know next year in 2023, they're going to do Chucky. Uh, they've done Halloween. And since it is Universal and they make movies, they are the ones, you know, making sets for this stuff. So whenever they have the haunted houses and stuff, it looks just like the movie. Yeah, so it's great. Definitely, definitely a thing that you want to go to. But here's our little clue, tip, whatever you want to call it. Keep in mind that Halloween Horror Nights is a separate ticketed event than just Universal Studios. Now you can be a pass holder to Universal Studios, you can just pay your money to go to Universal Studios, but if you wanna to go to the actual Halloween Horror Nights event, you need a separate ticket. If you're staying at one of the resorts, some of them you'll get a free express pass, which helps you skip the line and a lot of their main attractions. Now you might think, okay, I have the express pass, free with the hotel stay and then you skip the rides all day and then Halloween Horror Nights opens up you go to that and all of a sudden it doesn't work for the houses so yeah there's a separate there's a separate pass a separate express pass to skip the lines at the haunted houses so keep that in mind if you're going and you want to get make sure that you get through all the houses and maybe all the houses multiple times because the lines can get extremely long for Halloween Horror Nights. But that's about it. That's wrapping up mm -hmm. our tricks, tips, uh, whatever things you want to call it. Things that you know. must know before mm -hmm. you go to Universal Studios, Florida, Islands of Adventure. But that's it for mm -hmm. this video. Definitely wish we would have known some of this stuff before we went. Especially the things with thing with Mido's because we really wanted to eat there. So this stuff is very helpful and you definitely want to know this before you go because it'll make your experience a lot better. We're going to go back in time to last year mm -hmm. or a little bit over a year ago when we went. Mm -hmm. We're going to watch this video of ourselves yeah. making this. And we're going to be like, wow. And we're going to be like, whoa. This is lots of good tips and stuff. And then our trip to Universal Studios will be so much better because yeah. of that. Yeah. So I hope you found this useful. If you did... Do what I said earlier. Like, like subscribe, subscribe, comment, share and we'll it see with you guys, everybody. I will see you guys next time on Beach Cliff Studios.